today's meeting is inviting Kate Osamor. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Kate, Kate Osamor to our OLI Web TV program. I also congratulate Kate uh, as the Labour Party candidate for May general elections for Labour Party. From what I have uh, learned from the internet about yourselves, you are a Tottenham GP practice manager, well, if I'm right, woman activist and a uh, trade unionist. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us why politics and what does it mean to you? Okay, well, thank you uh, for welcoming me here today. My name is Kate Osamo. <laughs> well, a lot okay. of people say Osamo because of the spelling, so it's okay. totally in fine. Turkish, yeah, it's okay, yeah, it's absolutely fine. Um, I'm a practice manager in Enfield, but I actually live in Tottenham, which is the constituency next to Edmonton. So sometimes the two get mixed up, which is absolutely fine. Um, yes, I am active in the trade union. I am, I'm a member of Unite the Union, which is one of the largest trade unions in, in the UK. I'm a lay member, I'm not an officer for, for Unite, and I sit on various committees. One of them is the political committee, another one is the BAME committee, and I have been in the union the majority of my work, all of my work in life. One of the reasons I got into politics is because of my mother. My mother is Marfa Osamo, and in the 1980s she was a vice chair of Black Sections. Black Sections was a group of Labour Party members who were of um, Afro-Caribbean heritage who wanted to have a voice within the Labour Party. They felt that the Labour Party was not speaking up for um, black members and they felt that they needed positions, i.e. councillors or MPs, and they fought to ensure that they got black representation in Parliament and four black MPs were elected under their, their mobilising members. One of them was Bernie Grant, who was the MP for Tottenham, the other one was Diane Abbott, who is uh, MP in Hackney North. There was Keith Faz, who's still an MP in Leicester, for Leicester. And also Paul Boateng, who now is um, in the House of Lords, I believe. I may be wrong, but he wasn't. So those four got through in the 80s. Um, in 1987, my mum was basically selected in Vauxhall. But because of her so-called radical um, beliefs, the NEC decided to remove her and they put in Kate Hoey. So she was basically removed and wasn't allowed to be an MP, and that was in the 80s. So just to give you a little background of me, that is the home that I grew up in. I grew up in a very political background, political household, and I learned from a very young age that it's very important to stand up and talk for those who do not have a voice, especially in politics. Um, I understand uh, there's a very large ethnic Turkish speaking community in Edmonton and uh, what would you like to change or influence in Edmonton and do you have any special message especially to the Turkish speaking electorate in Edmonton? Well yes you are correct there is a huge Turkish speaking um, community in electorate in Edmonton. I grew up in Haringey so I am very 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 close two Turkish um, you know, friends, I've read a lot of Turkish friends as an example, but more importantly I believe that the issues which Turkish speaking communities are affected by are the same issues which African Caribbean, you know, um, there's many communities, I could list them all, but I, what I'm basically saying is that they all overlap. So one of the biggest messages I'm going to get across today is that I will ensure that they have a voice in Parliament and that voice will be around issues to do with housing, jobs, security, and you know, making sure that they know that if they need someone to speak to, I'm here for them, and I'm going to make sure that their voice is never forgotten. Uh, it seems to me, from my observations of recent events in Edmonton, such as the expect unexpected late resignation of Andy Love, mm -hmm. Secondly, the very, very short list of candidates being put forward. And thirdly, the final selection of trade unionists. Uh, am I right to think the unions are in a very strong position to select uh, who they think fit 
or the Labour Party, including the party leader? And if so, is this healthy for the Labour, Labour Party's future? Well, that's a very interesting question, and I, that, had, that question has come up before. And what I would say in answer to that is that the members are the ones who voted for me, and some members are in the trade union, and some members aren't in the trade union. But the only people that can put me in this position are the members of Edmonton. Uh, what about the Labour Party itself, not just in Edmonton, but other areas where unions, union, uh, unions uh, seems to be having a lot of influence, as I have also mentioned in my question, mm -hmm. in including uh, choosing who will lead the Labour Party. And that is, uh, as far as um, I'm not a party supporter or any party supporter, mm. but reading and hearing in media these kind of things, and uh, it makes a lot of people think, uh, are we going back before P Tony Blair's, mm -hmm. before Tony Blair's and Gordon Brown's time, whereas the uh, unions will dictate how to run politics in this country. That's what I meant by asking, okay. is this healthy for the Labour Party? Is well, it true, first of all, and well, if it is? Okay, I mean, I think what we need to understand here is that the trade union, the trade union was there before the party, and the Labour Party was developed for, as a voice for trade unionists. Okay. So that link must always be there. A and historical we, link. It's a historical link, okay. and that link will always be there. And going on to the leadership and whether trade unionists were able to vote for the you know for the leader, it is true to say that as a Labour member and a member of the union, you are given another vote because you are, your union is affiliated to the Labour Party. But that is something you pay into. So the party actually get money from those members and that is part of what you get if you are a member of a union which is affiliated to the party. So it is a relationship which is a clean and transparent relationship, but it does mean that members of the Labour Party who are members of a trade union which is affiliated to the party, they will also be given a second vote. So, so from what I understand, that it is inseparable. Inseparable, and it's members something... Members being both uh, par uh, supporters of the party yes. and the union. Yes, but not okay. all unions are affiliated to I the see. Labour Party, okay. So, um, which I think is another thing which needs to be put out there. I think it needs to be explained yeah. to the electorate because uh, mm -hmm. most of the time we may not look at it from that angle. Yeah, of course, which and, is fine. Uh, yeah. where people outside on the street might feel that uh, I don't want to give my vote to Labour simply because I'm frightened. I don't want strikes. I don't want socialist unions trying to dictate mm -hmm. uh, issues into my life. Yes. Uh, so that's why I asked the question. Yeah, no, it's a fair question. And, and I think also one thing we must remember is that every trade union which is affiliated to the party, it gives the party over a million pounds. So my union, as an example, will give the Labour Party over a million pounds. In other words, your donations. We donate money and then our members okay. pay money into the party okay. and then you get a vote. Because mm. we want our community uh, to vote yes. for policies. Definitely. Personally, mm -hmm. I am someone who supports voting for policies rather than uh, for, Dictatorship. for patriotism. patriotism. Yes, patriotism. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't think it's healthy for it's not. our families and our children for our future. I, if we mm. just keep supporting uh, Manchester United. But if I shall, support Arsenal. I'm a su <laughs> Arsenal supporter. If whoever plays well should uh, win the match, as far That's as I'm right. concerned. But I think it's important that the historical link is there. And because of that, that is why there is a link between trade unions and the party. I think it's been, uh, I your explanation has been fantastic. Uh, uh, to me as well, that mm -hmm. I have to look at it from the angle yeah. as well, and I'm sure the listeners will evaluate things uh, themselves as well. And thank you very much uh, for your thank thank you. You. question. Yeah, yeah. Is, you know, it's water collections Edmonton and rubbish fabric is Ed Edmonton, and new investment is coming. Yeah, is Edmonton is laundry for London? Every rubbish is clean. The Edmonton. Well, I, thi I think that's a big question because even in Harringay we have that problem. Muswell Hill is very clean, and Tottenham isn't. Um, and it's the same borough. Yeah. Mm. And it's these contracts, it's a lot of money. I mm. mean, you know, we're talking millions. So it, there's no reason why the whole borough should not be clean. Mm. But I think it's, it's very much about the councillors and who's the cabinet lead for environment and whether or not they are phoning up. Is it Viola you have in Enfield? I'm not sure, but I know in, in Haringey it's Viola. 
you have to be on it. The councillors have to be on it. Reporting, 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 reporting. Because if you don't do that, they just leave it. 